For the first time in the history of U.S. spaceflight, an ongoing mission will be cut short due to an astronaut's health issue. In a media briefing the evening of Thursday, January 8th, NASA Administrator Jared Isaacman announced that the agency plans to bring Crew-11 home from the International Space Station, quote, within the coming days. This is more than a month before they were scheduled to return. After discussions with Chief Health and Medical Officer Dr. J.D. Polk and leadership across the agency, I've come to the decision that it's in the best interest of our astronauts to return Crew-11 ahead of their planned departure. NASA astronauts and our teams in mission control and profession are professionals who train for every possible scenario at every step of the mission, including moments just like this. This all started on Wednesday, January 7th, as crews were making final preparations for a planned spacewalk set for Thursday morning. NASA astronauts Mike Fink and Zena Carman were preparing to build out a truss structure, allowing for the future installation of an ISS rollout solar array later this year, along with other maintenance tasks. But then, shortly after 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Japanese astronaut Kimiya Yui called down to Mission Control in Houston to ask for a private medical conference. And uh, Houston, uh, we still have like a, do you have like a camera view in uh, Node 2? Uh, 3, uh, lab? We don't have any internal cameras right now, but we can put the lab view in if, they, if you like it. Uh, please do that, and uh, if, you, uh, if you have like a, a direct to have like a crew surgeon. Yes, we'll get that in work. All right, surgeon. Communications dropped out at that point, and NASA took down its typical 24-7 ISS live stream that includes space-to-ground mission audio. As many of you know, we have a very robust suite of medical hardware on board the International Space Station, but we don't have the complete amount of hardware that I would have in the emergency department, for example, to complete a workup of a patient. And in this particular incident, that the, uh, the medical incident was, was sufficient enough that we were uh, concerned about the astronaut, that we would like to complete that workup. And the best way to complete that workup is on the ground, uh, with where we have the full suite of uh, medical testing hardware. As per NASA protocol, the agency is not identifying the crew member affected, but said multiple times that the individual is, quote, stable. NASA leadership considered whether or not it would be feasible to preserve the current timeline or move up the launch of the Crew-12 mission to allow for a direct handover. Because the astronaut is absolutely stable, this is not an emergent uh, evacuation. We're not a, uh, immediately em disembarking and, and getting the astronaut down. But it leaves that lingering risk and lingering question as to what that diagnosis is. And that means there's some lingering risk for that astronaut on board. And so always we err on the side of the astronaut's health and welfare. And in this particular case, uh, we are doing the same. Dr. James Polk, the chief health and medical officer for NASA, was cautious about giving out information that could lead to a disclosure of his medical diagnosis. However, he was able to rule out a notable possibility of what happened. This actually had nothing to do with the operational environment uh, in preparing for a space, spacewalk at all. Uh, this was totally unrelated to any operations on board. Um, and of course, we do a huge amount of testing for astronauts before they go to orbit. Um, and they're used to those operational environments. They practice the spacewalk and the pre-breathe many, many, many times. Uh, but this was not related to the operations or the spacewalk at all. The Crew-11 mission launched to the International Space Station from Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center back on August 1st. Their Dragon spacecraft, named Endeavour, docked to the forward port of the Harmony module on August 2nd. Thank you so much for this warm welcome. During their time on station, the crew members, Cardman, Fink, Yui, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Platonov, have conducted dozens of science experiments, along with other research and observations. Fink also assumed command of the space station on December 7th, taking over from Russian cosmonaut Sergei Ryzhikov. And with that, it's a big honor. I'm going to count on all of you uh, for, for your kind support, but uh, I accept the command of the International Space Station and thank you for your trust. The official plan before the medical issue cropped up was for NASA and SpaceX to launch the Crew-12 mission no earlier than February 15th. NASA astronauts Jessica Meir and Jack Hathaway would fly to the ISS alongside European Space Agency astronaut Sophie Adenal and Roscosmos cosmonaut 
Andrei Fedyaev. Normally, there would be a short handover period between the incoming Crew-12 and the outgoing Crew-11. But because Crew-11 is departing before Crew-12 gets there, NASA and the international partners will have to go with an indirect handover. And liftoff. The last time this happened was when the Crew-3 launch delayed due to a combination of poor weather and a, quote, minor medical issue involving one of its crew members. That left an on-orbit U.S. vehicle gap of just a few days. This, however, would be much longer. It, the, first of all, this is one of the reasons why we fly mixed crews um, on Soyuz and, and, and uh, U.S. vehicles, because we want to make sure we have operators for both segments, Russian and U.S. segments, and, can, and, and perform all the nominal uh, maintenance and other capabilities on the vehicle. Once Crew 11 departs, it will leave a three-person crew alone on the station for the first time in nearly two decades. Following the 2003 Columbia disaster, the ISS reduced its long-duration crew complement down to a two-person caretaker crew, an American and a Russian, while the space shuttle wasn't flying. And liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery. Three-person rotations returned with Expedition 13 in July 2006. That was when European Space Agency astronaut Thomas Reiter was flown to the ISS as a member of STS-121, the return to flight mission for shuttle. The station then expanded to six standing members, beginning with the arrival of Soyuz TMA-15 in May 2009, which began Expedition 20. The standard crew size then increased again to seven with the advent of commercial crew, beginning with the SpaceX Crew-1 mission in November 2020. That was in the midst of Expedition 64. The early departure of Crew-11 is historic in another way, it will be one of the rare times when there has been just one American on board the International Space Station. This mission is also NASA astronaut Chris Williams' first space flight. Chris is trained to do do every task he that we would ask him to do on the vehicle. Of course, we also do a lot of the operations of the vehicle from our various control centers all over the all over the world, including commercial control centers that operate a lot of our research payloads. So he will have you know, thousands of people looking over his shoulder like our crews do all the time to help sure that they, they continue the groundbreaking science. If a significant issue were to arise on the outside of the space station that would normally require a spacewalk, Kshatriya says that will have to wait until Crew 12 is on board. We'd like to have we, we, U.S. EVA capability at the ready if, to respond to additional failures. And in those particular cases, we would have a delayed response to, to one of those uh, significant failures if, if we had them on board. That, of course, the vehicle is very fault tolerant. So not only we would have to have a major subsequent failure, but then a failure after that before we had a real contingency on board ISS, which is why you know, as we evaluated the situation, we decided it made, it made a lot more sense to protect for a, a situation that we knew was something we needed to deal with rather than uh, something of, of a likelihood that we deemed uh, lower than normal and, and also the crew on board uh, both Russian and American are well trained to operate in the environment that they're in and can operate the nominal systems the nominal research uh, per, per the plan until their their uh, their crewmates arrive on crew 12. The timing of crew 12's launch is still in work as is the re-entry timeline for crew 11. Isaacman said they would share updates with the public as soon as they can. Reporting for Space Flight Now, I'm Will Robinson Smith.